The group of states against corruption will conduct the first evaluation procedure of anti-corruption work in Kazakhstan in 2021. According to the executive secretary of the organization Gianluco Esposito, the country will receive recommendations in the near future. Gianluco Esposito says that implementation of the recommendations will improve the business climate and economic development of the country. Greco was established in 1999 by the Council of Europe. Kazakhstan joined the organization on January 1st of 2020, becoming the 50th member. We look at the measures the countries have taken or not taken, how effectively they are implemented or not implemented, what results the anti-corruption system has achieved, and that is the content of our evaluations. Mass protests in Lebanon have become more intense. Clashes between demonstrators and police in the country started on Tuesday evening. The protesters threw stones at law enforcement officers. Moreover, they broke the windows of bank offices in the city center in Beirut. Some of the protesters have temporarily blocked roads with trash cans. The police used batons and tear gas to disperse them. According to official data, nearly 45 people, including media representatives, were injured during the clashes. The European Parliament confirms the withdrawal agreement on the scheduled date of January 31st. This has been announced by the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, at the joint press conference with the Prime Minister of Ireland in Dublin. She said that Ireland has been crucial to the entire process. She said one of the top priorities was to ensure peace and stability in the island. The Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell reported that the article of impeachment against Donald Trump has been transmitted to the Senate. The impeachment will be considered by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, while senators will be involved as jurors. In December of the last year, the U.S. House of Representatives impeached the President Trump on charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Investments into Kazakhstan's agriculture have been increased by almost 40 percent. Representatives of the Kazakh Agriculture Ministry said that the investment value in the local agricultural facility has amounted to more than 429 billion tenge in 11 months of 2019. Nearly 80 percent were funds of investors and business people. The main investments worth nearly 93.5 billion tenge have been accounted for the country's main bread basket, North Kazakhstan region. In Pavlodar that region, growth of the investment value has been sharply increased by three times compared to 2018. Certain conditions such as tax preferences and subsidization have been created for investors. In total, 2019 was productive in terms of attracting investments into agriculture. The first steps were made to establish long-term relations with foreign partners. Success has been achieved not only in attracting additional funds into the industry. Last year was productive in expanding Kazakhstan's cooperation with leading international agricultural companies. The president of Kazakhstan, Qasim Jomar Tokayev, paid an official visit to Germany last year. As a result, the Kazakh Agriculture Ministry signed a joint statement on future plans with Germany's Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture. During the working visit of the Kazakh Prime Minister Askar Mamin to the United States, a landmark agreement was signed with leading investors of American agricultural business. This has been aimed at opening the meat processing enterprise and production of irrigation systems in Kazakhstan. The Kazakh agriculture minister Saparhan Omarov has signed a number of agreements on agriculture development with heads of relevant bodies of countries such as Argentina, Georgia, Germany and Iran. The first greenhouses for cultivation of early vegetables and fruits on stony grounds were built in the Tajikistan's Hatlon region. The greenhouse keeps the temperature of 30 degrees Celsius above zero. It is an optimum temperature for growing Alpida tomatoes, which are resistant to diseases, and they ripen quickly. The Alpida variety is adapted for cultivation on the rocky ground. Since autumn, we have harvested the three crops of tomatoes. In order to harvest this amount of crops, farmers of the neighboring greenhouse monitor the air humidity and soil moisture. Cauliflower is being grown as well. The plants require a lot of light to grow. 
Last year we harvested nearly a ton of cauliflower. Now we are preparing the soil for seedlings. We are going to slightly increase the sown area. Our cauliflower is in great demand. It is the largest greenhouse in the farm with an area of half a hectare. The Maya lemon is grown as well. Despite the fact that citrus fruits do not require some special care, it is important to maintain the inside temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. We use 180 hectares of land to build modern greenhouses in our farm. We've drilled several wells nearby to establish drip irrigation, which led to the rich harvest Vegetables grown in the greenhouses are sold in many cities of Tajikistan. New cold rooms will help to preserve 10,000 tons of fruits and vegetables. Digital technologies are being actively introduced in healthcare in Kyrgyzstan. The online medical service project was launched in the Osh Regional Children's Hospital as part of the Year of Development of Regions and Digital Transformation in 2019. Doctors receive information about the patient's health online. Thus, due to the e-medicine, there is an improvement of quality and efficiency of providing medical services in prevention of various diseases among children. First of all, doctors save time and travel expenses of both doctors and patients have been reduced. Secondly, the online medical assistance implies the timely treatment of the patients. Seven districts in the Osh region have joined the project. Neighboring regions such as Jalal Abad and Batken plan to join as well. Meanwhile, digital transformation included a family medicine center. The online queue has been launched as a pilot project in the center. The center's partner pharmacies have switched to e-prescriptions. <laughs> Patients used to bring three copies of prescription. Now a patient's prescription is automatically downloaded in a computer. We can see the name of a patient in the system of the partner pharmacies. Kyrgyzstan is working to improve access to the Internet. The Internet connection is planned to be provided in all rural clinics in the first quarter of the year. The focus on tourism has yielded good results, according to the statistics. Last year, almost one and a half million vacationers visited Alakul in Almaty region. Five years ago, there were only 140,000 tourists. Today, the tourists can reach the lake resort by rail and air transport. All flights were subsidized from the regional budget. The ticket price from Taldakorgan to Usharal, 10,000 tenge, and from Nur Sultan, just 16,000 tenge. Next year, the construction of the road leading to popular recreation areas will be completed. The roadside service facilities and gas stations will operate. A leisure park and lots of beach, volleyball, tennis and futsal courts will be opened the next season. The tourists said that the Alakul resort is becoming increasingly attractive. Now there are a lot of recreation areas for the tourists. We come to Alakul each year. Obviously, it has become more comfortable and the customer service has been improved as well. By 2025, the number of tourists to the Imantau Shalkar resort area is planned to be increased by 10 times. In 2019, the resort joined the top 10 priority projects of the touristification map of Kazakhstan. The number of foreign tourists is increasing. The growth has made 33.9%. The largest number of the foreign tourists comes from Russia, China, Uzbekistan and the United States. Within the nine months of last year, more than 117,000 people visited the tourist area. 
More than 500 cultural events of international, republican and regional importance will be held this year as part of the 175th anniversary of Abayokh Nanbayla. The main events include theater performances, poetry and literary competitions, symposiums, festivals, poetry evenings, round tables and scientific and educational conferences. Sightseeing tours to facilities related to the name of the poet will be organized. According to the Kazakh Deputy Culture and Sports Minister Nurkisa the budget of all commemorative events will amount to nearly 3 billion tenge. The official opening ceremony of the anniversary celebration of the great poet and philosopher will take place on January 21st. The official ceremony is planned to be held in Astana Opera. In addition, one of the main activities is translation of the collection of Abai's works in 10 different languages. The books will be published in a circulation of 3,000 copies and will be available online for people who read Abai. Another unique project is filming of the documentary about Abai's life and work, as well as his contribution to development of our country's culture. Scientists of Abai studies are preparing for the anniversary celebration of the Kazakh poet. The Abai Khnanbayla Center of Culture in the Baku State University plans to hold several events. Tocologists are willing to further study the philosopher's legacy and publish a number of works of the Kazakh poet in Azerbaijani language. This center was created in May 2011 by the this center, initiated by the Baku State University and the Guminov Eurasian National University, was established in May 2011. A lot of works of different complexity have been completed over this time. Perhaps the main work was translation of Abai's works into Azerbaijani. Words of edification were translated to Azerbaijani in 2017. At the same time, all works of Abai Khunanbayla translated to Azerbaijani were compiled in one collection. We conduct additional classes on the study of Kazakh poetry. We learn and study rich Kazakh literature as well as publish books on this topic. We plan to participate and hold conferences dedicated to the 175th anniversary of Abai. Then we want to write a book that will include presentations of our scientists about Abai's creativity. Researchers aim to translate Abai's works from Kazakh. This will allow conveying all the intricacies of the poet's thoughts in Azerbaijani. Firuza Agaeva is a scientist and author of books such as The Creative Path of Abai, The Personality and Legacy of Abai, as well as Abai and Azerbaijan. She highlighted the importance of celebrating the anniversary of the great Kazakh philosopher at the highest international level. People love reading Abai in Azerbaijan just like in Kazakhstan. We are eager to convey all the intricacies of his creativity to our students. As part of the classes on Kazakh educators of the 19th century, we focus on works and the worldview of Abai. It was him who brought the Enlightenment to the highest level. The Abai Khunanbayla Center of Kazakh Language and Literature in Baku holds regular events dedicated to the Kazakh culture. This year, The Path of Abai by Mukhtar Avezov is planned to be published in Azerbaijani, as well as the performance based on the Maskhot poem is expected to be staged. One of the most complicated opera performances in the world continues to win the hearts of the art connoisseurs in Nur Sultan. The Madama Butterfly Opera of the Giacomo Puccini is being staged in Astana Opera. The story takes place in Japan in the last century. Young geisha Chiu Chiu San falls in love with the American naval lieutenant and marries him despite traditions of that time. The love story ends with tragedy. The monologue of the Madama Butterfly before committing suicide is one of the most powerful among opera arias. The strong choreography, emotional scenes and the dramatic performance coupled with the bright scenery and thoughtful costumes help the audience to delve into the authentic atmosphere, making them to feel compassion for the lead characters again and again. 
We could feel emotions that we've got from the audience, especially towards the end. When this tragedy happens, we could hear people crying and sobbing. When people approached us after the performance with watery eyes, it was clear that they could feel emotions of the characters. And they do empathize. This story leaves spectators emotional, for sure.